Hello everybody and welcome to episode 31 of This Old Knit. I am your host Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest. And um, I don't have show notes for today. I'm on the road again, so i um, just going to do the best I can with the things that I brought with me. So um, I brought a lot more stuff than I possibly could have crafted with. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because I um, just had a ton of knitting in my bags. And uh, yeah, the drive up was actually in the dark, so I wasn't able to knit. But hopefully on the way home and I'll probably do some either knitting or cross stitch after I finish recording. But since I missed recording this weekend, I wanted to make sure that I did it so that I could uh, share some stuff with you because I have at least one thing that I want to mail in a package, a swap package, but I sewed it. So I wanted to show it off on the podcast first before I mailed it off and it goes to its final intended recipient. So, um, the lighting is probably going to be a little bit off because I'm in a hotel room and um, the lights are terrible. So the light has a weird kind of yellowish shade on it. Um, and it doesn't look like I could easily take it off. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go with it. And I haven't figured out quite how to adjust the white balance on my cell phone camera. I know how to do it when I'm using the regular camera, but for the selfie camera, I do not know how to adjust for that. So anyway, that said, we will move forward with the episode. So um, this week for knitting, I have been working mostly on my um, Christmas socks, which are in this bag. Um, oh, a mid row on that, but that's okay. So I've completed one sock, and here it is. So I am knitting this in the West Yorkshire Spinners um, holiday colorways. They release two special holiday holiday colorways. One is um, this red color and um shoot i think it's holly berry no holly berry is the patterned one i always know what the red one is and i don't know what the patterned one is so this time i was like okay the patterned one is holly berry and now i don't remember what the red one is i think it's cranberry um but anyway, I ordered both of them off the West Yorkshire Spinners website. They had great customer service. They both came very quickly and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So these are my first uh, self-patterning uh, sock yarn that I've ever knit with. And it's really fun. I can see what the fuss is all about because um, I felt like they went very quickly um, because you're always wanting to finish the next stripe or see what the next thing is. and I. When I was doing the leg, I was like, okay, um, for the second sock, I thought, oh, I just need to do three dark green stripes and then I'll be ready to start the heel. So this one flew, just absolutely flew. So here's what I have on the second sock. And as you can see, I'm mid row on the heel flap. What I'm doing is a basic uh, 64 stitch pattern. I did 20 rows of ribbing at the top and then I did one plain round before I switched to the patterned yarn so that wouldn't be a weird uh, transition color. On this sock it's slightly different than this one. You can kind of see that. I just didn't want to wind off so much of the yarn to waste it. Um, I think I have enough that I'll be able to use it to make a hexi puff, but I wanted to make sure I had a big enough little nugget, yarn nugget, that I could do something with it rather than doing just enough to get to the color change and potentially not being able to use that yarn at all. So um, I went to where the green started. This one I just randomly started at where the ball started. 
So they'll be ever so slightly different, but really not that far off at all. Just a couple of rows difference on the color change. And yeah, I did, um, let's see, I think I did 18 um, slip stitch rows. So I count by how many slip stitches I have on the side because I pick up 18 stitches along both of the gusset edges. And then um, that, that seems to be the size gusset that fits my foot really well. And then I went down to right before where I was going to do decreases for the toe. And again, I did one plain round before I started decreasing on the toe to transition into the other color. And then I did uh, Kitchener when I had 12 stitches on each needle, so 24 stitches total. I have fairly um, not pointy toes, fairly like, I don't know what you would say, blunt, boxy toes. So this um, toe actually fits me really well. Sometimes I'll go down to where I have eight on each needle, but I actually don't really like when they're that pointy. So anyway, that's what I did for this one. I wrote up the notes in my pattern page, if anybody's interested in doing what I did. So I'm just repeating it for the second one. And I expect I'll probably have these done maybe by um, next episode because um, I should have some time off coming up here. So I will have more knitting time because Thanksgiving for those of us in the States is coming up. And um, yeah, so I will have off that whole week. Now I will be doing some house cleaning because we're having guests over. So we're doing um, our traditional um, family Thanksgiving at um, my mom and stepdad's house and then um, on Saturday we're going to have friends over to our house and we're going to do our own Thanksgiving dinner which my husband always really enjoys because he loves to cook and um, my mom's house this is pretty small so the kitchen is really small and it's hard for a lot of people to do stuff so Josh really can't get involved in the process. Um, so it's nice. We've been doing two Thanksgivings for I think this will be our third year and um, we really enjoy it. So yeah this year I'm gonna try to make um, homemade ice cream. I might do that for both Thanksgivings. I don't know yet. Um, depends on how it turns out. <laughs> I'm gonna do a test batch like maybe later this week. I've got the bowl all in the freezer and freezing because you have to have it in there for 24 hours before. Um, so I'm going to do a test batch of something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make cinnamon ice cream for actual Thanksgiving because I think that'll be really good with the different pies. But for my test batch, I'll probably just make vanilla. Okay. And the next thing I've been working on, I really haven't worked on this at all. I've been a terrible informal caller because those socks really sucked me in. And uh, I haven't had a lot of knitting time, so I've been just kind of doing those because I can pick them up and put them down and it's my own pattern. I don't have to follow anything. Not that I couldn't. I'm so sorry. It's like after my bedtime right now. Not that I couldn't do that with this because right now it's just two by two ribbing, but I just haven't worked on it. So this is my calligraphy cardigan and this is all I have done on it so far. But I was working on it in the car because I thought I could do two by two rib in the dark, but then I got off by one stitch. So I think I had to rip out basically everything I did in the car. <laughs> but that's okay. I think I might work on this tonight till I fall asleep this or cross stitch. So the calligraphy carding I, I'm doing in RYC Cash Soft DK. Um, this is I think the raspberry colorway. It has a number on the actual label but I think when I looked it up on the website it was um, called raspberry. And then I did do some knitting on my 
vanilla latte socks. So these I am knitting in um, Bow and Vine Yarns Footsie Base in the Octopus Garden colorway. I'm really excited to finish these. I've got a couple pairs of socks that, as you can see, I'm almost done with. So I'm excited to have some new hand knit socks. There's the yarn. You guys have seen that before. Very nice and springy. I'm enjoying the BFL a lot. I'm knitting a lot of BFL socks, but I think... No, I have one pair. One pair of BFL socks, and I do really like them. So, um... I was going to say, I don't think I actually have any finished ones, but I do. So I think I maybe knit like this much on this sock. And that was because I didn't remember to bring any other knitting, and this has kind of been living in my work bag. So, um, yeah, I just happened to knit some on it at lunch one day. But it was fun. It's good one of those pick up and put down easily projects because it's a really basic um, sock pattern but as you can see if I lay them side by side here's where my one is so I have this much more of the leg to do before I will start my um, heel flap so I'm not super far off that's really only like 30 minutes to an hour's worth of knitting for me if I can get straight knitting time. So maybe I'll have two pairs of socks done next time that I podcast. We'll see. We will see where my interest takes me because I am a fickle knitter. I just knit what I feel like. Especially if I'm really busy. I just knit whatever inspires me because that's what helps keep me de-stressed. Um, so then the other two things I have with me, I don't think I've actually started what I have in here, have I? So this is my finished bag. I don't think I ever showed it to you guys once I completed it with the, I put, um, grow grain ribbon in it. Um, if I were to do it again, I probably would pick a thinner one uh, simply because the ties on it were a little bit hard to feed through um, and they're basically the entire width of the channel that I made for them um, but it's fine for me and I already had this ribbon on hand so I didn't have to I didn't want to have to go buy anything and I wanted to be able to use it for something so um, yeah, but I really like how it turned out. It's a print, it's a fat quarter that I got from Tuesday morning. So they actually have a pretty good little fabric selection there. Um, you just kind of have to, if you see something you like, you have to totally buy it or it's gonna be gone. Because it's very seasonal and they cycle things out very quickly. So um, I actually went back and got a whole bunch of different Christmas themed fat quarter bundles because they were like four dollars for I think you get like five different uh, fat quarters within that um, four dollar bundle and they're really cute fabrics so I got two bundles that were like more plain so kind of more like my liner fabric because I thought those would be good for doing liners just like this and for the top piece and they actually coordinate with some of their larger prints. So I have the one that I showed last episode that has the Christmas um, ornaments, the Christmas balls on it with the different decorations. And this was the contrasting fabric that I showed I was gonna use because it actually matches one of the little Christmas ball ornaments. Um, but I also thought it matched this guy really well. So this fabric I totally love and I did not find any more of this. They had it in a different background color, but I really liked the cream a lot. So I made one of these for me and one of them for a swap. Um, the one for the swap I used a uh, cream color ribbon and it was thinner. So yeah, it's a drawstring about sock size, but you 
could maybe put two balls of yarn in a project in here. It's not huge. But I'm really pleased with how it turned out. This was my very first um, lined drawstring project bag that I made. I made it with a tutorial from In Color Order that um, Knitting Daddy, who's Greg, um, recommended to me. And Greg actually has a podcast that I've been listening to. It's an audio podcast that he does with a friend of his. And um, it's really cool. And I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but I will link it in the episode notes for this episode so that you guys can go and check it out because they're really funny and um, I've been enjoying it so far. I think they have three episodes now. Um, so yeah, go check him out, Greg, and uh, thank you Greg again for the link to the tutorial because it's super easy and I've been able to make a couple different bags with it. So, um, hmm. yeah, before I go on to other projects that I have queued up, I will go ahead and share my other um, bag that I made. So this is the other one that's going to go for a swap. It's a dark green. It's not this crazy lime green that it's showing up as right now because, like I said, this light is very yellow. I have a picture of it on Instagram that turned out pretty well as far as the white balance goes. So I used a candy cane fabric on the top, these cute little gingerbreads on the bottom, and inside is this pretty golden snowflake fabric, which I like a lot. And I used the cream color grow grain ribbon for the ties. So yeah, it draws strings as well. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun. So I'm very pleased with how that one turned out too, and I hope that my swap partner likes it as well. I'm late sending out my swap. Um, so this is going to go for the Desus Craftwork um, Spoil Each Other swap. Um, so my partner is Ina Pina. And she sent me the lovely quilted bag that I showed last week. Um, so hopefully she'll enjoy the bag that I've made for her. And that was the reason that my swap package was not sent out because I had had no time to go and sit down at my sewing machine and actually sew together all the pieces. I've had them cut out for a while now, but I just hadn't had time to assemble them. So I took an hour on um, Saturday and sewed everything together. <clears throat> but then obviously our post office is closed on Saturday and then I've been at work this week so I will get it out I promise and she has actually checked out one of the episodes of the podcast so she now watches so I won't share anything else I'm going to put in the package but I wanted to share that because I actually did make it with my own two little hands and I'm so proud um yeah so Mitten number one, I haven't done anything else with it. It's done, like I said, other than the thumb, and I always do my thumbs last. I finally located the second ball. <laughs> After much searching, you can see it's seen better days. I, Joshua had actually taken it and hidden it somewhere. So now I can cast on my second mitten. Um, I'm not going to stress too much about getting it started at the exact same point on the coloring. Like I said, as long as they match more or less with the, all the total colors in the ball, um, I'm fine with that. So, we'll cast that on soon. So, that was one of the things living in this bag. Because for some reason I thought, oh, I'll bring that and stay in case I like I want to cast on and knit an entire mitten and then knit more mittens because I brought more yarn. <laughs> so I brought this yarn to make a pair of foraging mittens. Um, I want to do that for the make two swap from uh, Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. So I'm going to do that and the Molly hat in um, fiber space scrumptious DK 
which it says it's DK in the name, but then in Ravelry it listed as a worsted, and it is a worsted weight yarn, so I'm going to use it. I'm going through these projects really fast. I'm only at 20 minutes, and I'm blasting through. Um, so then acquisitions, I have a couple different things to share this week, which I kept them in the crinkly, crinkly plastic, but I don't think that comes out that bad when I use my phone to record, so hopefully it won't be too terrible for you. So I finally got some yarn from Molly. I caught an update of her shop, because um, I always seem to be missing them. Um, but I, w I did manage to catch this one. So she had some pygmy puff. And this is on her Olsen base. Her Olsen fingering base. Which I think she's decided not to carry anymore. She's replaced it with something different. Um, but she had a couple more skeins in the shop. So I went ahead and went for it. Because I really liked the colorway. And it is a 75% superwash BFL. 25% nylon. 438 yards, 400 meters, and it's really pretty. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet, but I wanted to take advantage of, you know, getting that color. So there's her tag. And I love these, like, pops of magenta. So pretty. And it's got some like very light blush pinks and then like candy, cotton candy pink and like, yeah, it's really pretty. So I'm sure it'll be something really fun. I thought it might even be really cool as like a two color shawl um, with gray or um, white something where like that color can really jump out so, I don't know yet but it was a really crappy day at work that day and um, that package came that evening so it made me smile and I sent Molly a little note just to say Thank you for having such lovely, lovely yarn, and I think it must be nice for people that create things to know that it brings joy to other people, right? Because that's part of why we do it. Um, so here's Molly's card. And then I also got a couple of her Progress Keepers, because I have a few already, but I've been really enjoying using Progress Keepers versus just like stitch markers, because when I work in the round, if I have two circulars, I don't always do a stitch marker because I have my tail hanging down and I know that <clears throat> the beginning of one circular is the start of the round, so I don't really need one. But I do often need one for like, if I've counted, um, like on a sock, for example, I had it on my one sock leg and I counted um, on my second sock, I did 59 plain rounds before I wanted to start the heel. So I didn't want to keep counting after I'd already counted up to 30 or 40, but I wanted to see that I was making progress. So I just stuck it on there at a known amount, and then I counted up from there so I didn't have to count all the way from one again. So um, I got some more of those. So I got a teapot and a donut. super cute. I'm pretty sure I only ordered the teapot. And I think that Molly might have thrown in the donut, but I don't know. I looked at the donut for a while, so I'm not sure if I ordered it or not. But either way, thank you very much. They're very cute. They came very nicely packaged. Everything is always super pretty, as one would expect from Molly. She has such a lovely aesthetic. Okay. 
So that's that one. Oh no, I busted through the bag. Okay, that's all right. Now that I've shown it all to you, I'm gonna take those off that card and actually use them on projects. So that's one thing. And then the other thing I had ordered, not the most recent update, but the update before from Kristen's shop because it's like my kryptonite. I swear. It's really bad. <gasps> I just realized there's tea in here. Oh, I'm going to totally brew that up because the tea that's in this hotel room is awful. And I really wanted, it's all black tea and it's late at night so I'd rather have some herbal tea but you can hear my throat is very sore and I actually have to present tomorrow. I have to give like a three hour presentation so I need to not have a sore throat. It will not serve me well. Although even with a sore throat I can talk for days because I'm crazy like that. Um, so I got two yarns from her last update. One was this um, Smitten DK because I've never tried her DK base. And I really want to make another hat for myself. I think I've talked about that a couple of times that I have kind of a bulky weight hat. And then I have a beret um, that my mom knit for me out of uh, Kumara. But I kind of want an in-between weight hat. Um, and one that I can put down over my ears. So I think I'm going to knit the Sultana hat out of this, um, which is kind of a cabled hat. So I got this in the A Hint of Moss colorway. So it's got um, minty greens, kind of these yellowy greens, and then these fun little speckles. There's a lot of speckles right there which I think will be really pretty with cables because it's pretty subtle as far as the colorway goes. So I don't think it's going to overpower the cables or anything, but I think that'll add just like some interest to it. So yeah, I will cast that on pretty soon. I think whenever I get the two sets of socks off my needles, I probably will cast this on. And then um, I'm also going to make a bonbon uh, bunny out of the uh, full and vine yarns um, cake that I showed that I'm going to make the foraging mittens out of. But I'm going to make Megwin a little Christmas bonbon bunny for one of her Christmas gifts with like little green eyes to be a companion to Vary, which I've shared on the podcast before. Um, he's knit out of little bunny fufu no makers yarn. So then I will have a bonbon from two of my favorite dyers, knit from their yarns. And um, Megan will be excited because she's been asking for a little companion for Vary and she plays with him all the time and carries him around and stuff. So um, I think that'll be a nice Christmas gift for her. And I'm also gonna try to finish the Mommy to Vary because I have a little bit of um, the worsted weight little bunny fufu colorway left. Um, I knit her pair of mittens out of it and I should have enough to do the mommy very. Um, so we'll see how I feel about knitting two bonbons one after the other but the first one did not take me very long at all. It was very fast. It's a Susan Claudino pattern and she designs hers in such a way that like you knit the pieces but then you very easily can knit them together so there isn't a lot of finishing. So um, if you like any of her toy patterns, definitely do them because they are um, super easy from a finishing perspective. There isn't a lot of, there isn't seaming um, when you're done knitting the pieces. So um, yeah, so I just love that yarn so much. It's so pretty, so pretty. It's gonna be really, really beautiful. So that's that. And then the other one I got because um, because I couldn't stay away, was the um, special snowflake colorway. This is in her Volca base, which is an 801010 um, MCN. 
This is a really pretty colorway though. Look at that. Oh. It's got this dark blue with like shots of this forest green. Very, very soft sky blue, but there's more forest green in there and like some little shots of red. Oh, it's like a little color adventure in a skein. Every time I look at it, I feel like I'm discovering things. Yeah, let's see those little red and green speckles. You also can see my very weird fingernail. That one grows oddly folded. So strange. Whatever. It's as long as the other ones, but it's all like weirdly folded over. I don't know why that happens. There's some green right there. Ooh, yeah, there's some red. Oh, it's just so pretty. I love it. I love it, Kristen. It's beautiful. So, special snowflake. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this either. It's so pretty. I almost feel like it'd make a really beautiful shawl. So maybe I'll make a shawl out of it. I don't know. I'm kind of into shawls right now. I'm into wearing them. Um, but I kind of want a little bit bigger shawls. And I know that like one skein of uh, sock yarn does not make a very big shawl. Unless if it's more open and airy. Like more lacy. But oh, excuse me. I think that with... um kind of a variegated yarn like this, I'd want to have a more solid pattern, not a lot of laciness. So, I don't know. I don't know. I have some ideas. I have a lot of shawls in my queue. So those were my acquisitions. Oh, and Kristen included this super, super cute progress keeper. Isn't that pretty? It's a pretty snowflake. I love it. And she puts a little thank you note in. There's her card. Mm -hmm. So definitely check that out if you've not had Bowen Vine yarns before. Check her out. She does a beautiful job. She's another great dyer. But I need to actually knit with some of her yarn. <laughs> so I have a bunch of it. I'm knitting with the footsie. But, um, yeah, I guess my next couple projects I kind of have planned with her yarn now, right? Because I have to. I got cut off. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, I have my next couple projects, I guess, planned with full and vine yarn. So I can't really. Um, you know, grouse too much at myself about it. Because I'm going to use it. I will use it. And she also included this, which I'm going to go drink right now. Spice Dragon Red Chai. Which is caffeine-free herbal tea. And I'm so excited that I didn't take it out. Because it's going to help me. Thank you, Kristen. So, then in my lovely bag from you know. I am using this as my cross stitch bag. It is great because it's tall enough that I can actually fit my hoop in there. So I had been carrying in kind of a little cosmetics bag my other pieces of my cross stitch. So like my um, floss and my um, cloth, my linen. But um, I couldn't fit my hoop in the bag I was using. So now I can fit everything in one bag. And um, I even have my little um, Namaste buddy in there, which is what I keep like my scissors and stuff in. So it's great. I don't think I've done anything on this since last time I showed it, but I brought my Once Upon a Time sampler with me because I do want to work on it. Um, 
yeah, Joshua hasn't really let me work on it. The one day I got all the stuff out and I was ready to start stitching, like as soon as I got everything out, he woke up and was all over me, so that had to go away again. But for those who are just joining me and haven't seen it, here it is. It is a Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery pattern. It's the sampler from 2014 called Once Upon a Time. It has a square for every month that is a different fairy tale theme. And I am down to my last square, which is Hansel and Gretel. So you can see kind of, maybe you can see, sorry. Gingerbread House. I've done the letters. Um, the stuff right above the E, that's actually Gretel. It's her legs, her feet, and her dress. So, I'm getting there. I'm probably going to work on that some tonight. I'm feeling cross stitchy. Yeah, so that is everything that I have. Um, I have been checking out a new to me podcast called the Home Corner Podcast. Um, it's really cute and fun. Um, it has uh, knitting and sewing in it. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think she's three episodes in. Um, so yeah, check that out. It is a video podcast on YouTube. Um, what else? Oh, Autumn, who is Coddington on um, Ravelry, had suggested that maybe in the, you know, after we get through the holidays and everything, that it might be fun to do a particular yarn so do a knit along with um, a particular yarn dyer um, just because I have obviously my certain favorites and it would help me to actually use my yarn so um, I was thinking maybe no makers or woolen vine because I have a lot of that stuff um, so I don't know what you all think um, but let me know let me know in the comments for this uh, episode and I would be happy to uh, you know entertain ideas from people as well or maybe we can do multiple different dyers it could be like an indie dyer knit along or something like that I'm still noodling it over but um, yeah I would like some <sighs> encouragement to do um, to use the yarns that I've got because I have a lot of really pretty ones now that I would like to work on and I kind of have some ideas in my head so um yeah I think that's all I have and I probably should start winding down because I need to like I said rest my voice and um I want to start getting uh, ready for bed brew my tea I bought a little scone so I might eat my little scone and hang out and um just watch some podcasts. So I hope that you all have a great week. And um, if you have any questions or suggestions, as always, please feel free to put them in the episode thread. So thank you everybody for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.